I, I suppose I'm a, a member of the Earth Institute. Um, the Earth Institute is a new institute for UCD and its mission is to try and better understand um, current environmental issues and do something about them for the future. So this, this seems an absolute um, natural progression for the Institute to put, put on the Earth Gathering. So um, I was also invited to come here as a speaker, but I'm obviously going to participate actively in the debate and looking at the posters and everything else. So. Mm -hmm. I think we should do multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary science. And that's, I would, that's my understanding of what the Earth Institute's about. So putting a biologist beside a physicist, behind, beside a sensor technology development person, um, beside an educator. So the whole, I think we can only really make advances if we work across disciplines and uh, across multiple disciplines. So that, that's what I really think we should do. Education is hugely important because we need, we need educated citizens so that they um, vote on the right policies, they vote the right politicians into government. Um, so that they actually understand what some of the big grand challenges are for the globe, like f you know, feeding the future world, mitigating against future climate change. Um, you can only really go beyond the debate of um, humans are causing global change versus humans aren't causing global change. For the scientists, that, that's such an old debate. We don't even talk about it, but in the, in the general public, that's still a debate. And really, it's only through education that you're going to bring all citizens up to a level where they understand science and they can read a policy document like the IPCC and see, actually, there's no question humans are driving climate change. So education is fundamental, I think. Um, a huge question. Um, I, I think the major stumbling blocks is that in order to develop sustainably there has to be some cost economically. Um, we can't continue on a business as usual scenario. So one aspect of sustainable development would be cutting the amount of carbon we use as individuals and as uh, in business. So it requires behavioural change and there will be some sort of cost. Um, maybe as we advance technologies so that we can, rather than conserve energy, we can go into alternative energy. But there has to be a cost um, to get a solution and it's basically accepting that cost. So that I think that's one of the biggest challenges is trying to balance those two. I suppose the scientific community are responsible for educating the public. So, um, educating our students, but we have to go beyond the universities. Um, it, it, it's the lucky people who are at university, and there's plenty of people who don't go to university, but they need also to be educated about what the challenges are. So uh, it's our responsibility as scientists to disseminate the information we learn out as widely as possible, but also to gather data and to increase our understanding of what's going to happen in the future and to tighten our models on prediction about what's going to happen in the future and what some of the consequences are going to be. We, we're doing, um, we're trying to outreach to school level at the moment in our labs. So we've got this program Science for Schools and it's, we bring teachers into our lab team and they basically are embedded for about a month in the summer. They get exposed to all aspects of the science that we're doing and their role at the end of that month is to write um, a transition year pack for secondary schools. So we put it up on the website, freely accessible to all schools and it's a six week um, pack for teachers with all of the material you'd need to do the little mini labs for the students at transition year level. And what we've discovered, certainly in the, in the area of my field, um, some aspects are, are just not dealt with very well in the Leaving Cert and the students find it very boring. So we're trying to really excite them about aspects of plant sciences and some of the global challenges we're facing like climate change through this transition year pack. So that's one example. For me, I think it's conservation of energy. Um, 
every individual should do their utmost to conserve energy and it's little decisions like turning the thermostat down from 20 degrees to 18 degrees, getting the bus instead of taking a car as an individual unless you are um, travelling with many people. So it's, it's all those little things, it's behavioural changes um, and that actually gives people power because you can actually make those changes to conserve energy. Um, so that, that's what I would, that's what I would say, conservation of energy.